Excuse me, what? Excuse me, move on. There we go, please. family. I mean, you're coming in hot like you're not. Like you're not wilding. <laughs> Hey guys, oh sorry, hey guys and welcome to Little Black Book 91 in conjunction with Maria S. We are doing another review, yes, of F-Boy Island. This is season one, or oh, season one, right? Episode three. Okay, we're going to be talking to you guys about what happens in this particular episode and giving our thoughts and opinions and our observations as well. Welcome Maria, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm excited for episode three because things really ice up in episode three you know a lot happened a lot of confrontation a lot to talk about yeah there was quite a lot to talk about um we saw obviously jared uh with jared uh we saw obviously as well a little bit of uh garrett interrupting as well the new guy um as well was his name jamar was it jamar no it wasn't jamar Jamar, the other guy it was welcome sorry he interrupted welcome Welcome. garrett interrupted welcome to have a conversation with sarah um (laughs) we also had uh also again cj playing mind games once again when Jamar came in, ran and jumped on him. I okay. was looking at that. I was like, why, girl? Why? Girl is really playing. She wants to whine it in. She's playing that game, okay? All right. She just needs to know when to stop, but we're going we're gonna to run with it and see what happens. Anyway, listen, guys, if you're new to the channel and new to Maria's channel, make sure you like, you share, subscribe, click on the bell button for notification of the uploads. And as well, don't forget as well, all right? Don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. Leave a comment down below because, you know, we want to hear your voices and opinions as well, all right? Subscribe to both of our channels, LBB91 and Maria S. Little Black Book, you know what time it is. All right, let's get the show underway. Who are we talking about first then? Are we talking about Sarah, CJ, or are we talking about let's Nikia? Let's get Sarah out the way. Out of the way. Oh, you feel like she didn't have much going on this episode? This, this episode? No. Uh, okay, fair enough. Uh, okay, my first thing that I picked out was actually during the challenge uh, because she actually kissed Anthony on the back of the, uh, the neck. I don't know if you noticed that. I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Wow, okay. Uh, a little bit spicy. Uh, nothing too crazy. Okay, it wasn't too crazy. I just noticed that because I was like, obviously during the photo shoot, some people are more comfortable than others, mm-hmm. right, when it comes to this episode. For instance, Sarah and Garrett had photos that look like, um, what do I call it? Sun, uh, not a Sunset Beach. Had, look, had looking like, uh, what's the one they used to have back in the day with Pamela Anderson? Oh, um... Uh, Baywatch. Baywatch. Yeah, they had that kind of Baywatch kind of photo uh, going on. You know, him all abbed out and her looking all good and running along the beach. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was, it was a little photo. Like sport yes, th- he was going for that look. <laughs> he was going for that look. Less romantic, more of a sport kind of look um, as well. But I mean, uh, for for Sarah, obviously her whole main connections are Garrett at the moment, um, and obviously Josh as well. She made that very clear to welcome when she was sitting down with him. But what's your kind of thoughts around Sarah at the moment in in terms of her connections? Uh, I feel like, you know, all of her connections at this point are pretty surface level. Mm. Um, I think that Sarah is, her personality is very much so uh, introverted, reserved, and you know things like that, and so she needs a guy who is a little bit more uh, outgoing and like strong in that area. And so I think that's what she gravitates towards, and that's why you see her with like, the likes of Garrett. But I think that she's on this exploration journey of like, okay, like I want to go against what I'm normally used to, which is probably the Garrett type. And so she has Josh as an option that she is still exploring and you know figuring things out but then you know welcome comes in um as a new guy um Mm. she gravitates towards him which he is like all of her options to me are very different from yeah like they are complete opposites um however i think that this is a part of her finding herself i think Mm. that sarah does not know who she is Mm. I think that she doesn't know what she really wants. Mm. And so she 
is using this experience in order to find herself. But I think that when you do that and, you know, put yourself in this type of an environment to find yourself, it could potentially be very confusing because you don't really have time and space to really self-reflect, right? And so I think that, you know, it'll be interesting to see how things play out, you know, who she tends to build a stronger connection with. Is it going to be, you know, Garrett? Is it going to be Josh? Is it going to be Welcome? You know, Welcome gives me like, I hate to say it, (laughs) but you know, we have to just go off of vibes, you know, because we don't really know these people, especially as they're newly introduced to the show. (laughs) But he (laughs) gives me, he gives me like immature, like, you know, he's like a surfer boy or like a immature, like a bro, right? Yeah. Like he he doesn't give me like a sort of little man, grown man vibes, right? Um, Josh gives me super mature black man, respectable, like you know, will is open to interracial dating, you know, mm. potentially for status symbol or whatever. I don't know. And then um, you have Garrett, who is the self-proclaimed F-boy, bad boy, yeah. white boy, surfer boy, whatever, like, plays girls, you know, bad boy. So, yeah, like, I, I think she... She wants know, danger. Is it this, she, needs, she wants a little bit of that danger. I think that's what Josh doesn't, Josh doesn't have. He's very safe, very secure, um, and very, very stable. And I think that is great. But when you're young and you're inexperienced and you don't have what you actually, you don't, you're not aware fully of what you need. This is always going to be that fight you're going to have, which is, do I want to, do I want that danger? Listen, you know, this is that whole conversation. I think even us men even have it, which is like when we're young, we're like, yeah, I want that girl that's got that fire. You know, I want that girl that's got the energy. And you get, you start growing up and you start to experience that. And you start realizing, I don't want a girl I'm going to be fighting with every single day. All right? I don't want to be that. Like, Drake said it best the other day. He wants to marry Ayesha Curry's, a type of Ayesha Curry. But who's he sexing? And that's where people need to make that distinction between do I, who I don't want to sex and who do I really want to marry. Right? If you want to marry and you want to have a successful relationship, you don't want... Listen, stable, secure, safe is good. It's good. Right, you'll find your happiness there. Trust me. I know you're looking for that little bit of spark of danger, okay? That little bit of danger in you to, you know, to make you feel excited, make your heart go scooter boom, scooter boom. But scooter boom also makes you be in positions where you are literally not sure where you stand. You know what I mean? So, I think with Sarah, she's she's having that fight at the moment between she can sense that Garrett is. I, I don't know if I can even say she senses Garrett, but Garrett does have that edge of danger about him. Um, you know, he's saying the right things. Even on this particular clip, I'll play it in a second or two where Garrett comes in. In fact, let me play it so you can see it uh, when they're talking. Definitely shows that he was the most intimidated by me. How do you feel about, like, our connection? I've kind of been like, okay, like, does she feel the same way that I feel? I actually like sit here at night and I'm like, no, 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 you met this person like one time. Wait a second. Are you actually starting to like her? And then I'm like looking at myself and I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> and then I'm like, wait, is it? Then I wake up in the morning and I'm like, yeah, I do. I'm finding out that I'm definitely like physically attracted to Gary. I'm still figuring out if we are on the same level, like mentally and emotionally. Pause. That's all we need to know. Listen, the brother said, the most kiddie line you ever want to hear in your whole entire life. Okay, guys, let me just say it straight for you ladies. Don't fall for the okie doke, okay? It's an okie freaking doke, okay? A guy who doesn't know what he really wants to tell you now, you know, I didn't know I like you, but I like you, but I don't know if I like... Yo, it's not cute. It sounds so cute because it's like when you're young, this sounds so nice. But when you're grown, you know what people... What, people know what they need, what they want, what they like, right? That whole, oh, I don't know if I liked you, but I did like you. I'm not sure if I liked you. And I wake up in the morning, I'm not sure if I like you. And I realize I like you. That stuff is elementary, okay? It's very elementary. If you're listening to this as a woman, it's very elementary. Don't let him do that to you. Don't let him do that to you, okay? Don't let him do that to you. But I think what was really important was um, what she said 
in the cut section. She says, you know, I definitely have an attraction to him, but I don't know if we connect emotionally and mentally. And that for me is the quintessential answer that you ever needed, Sarah, as to whether you want to go forward. He doesn't have the mental capacity that you require. Josh does, because you've already said it. You connect on that intellectual level once again, but you're not doing that with Garrett because he doesn't have the range. Okay. He doesn't have it. He does not have it. He's not going to have it. It's not going to change, darling. Yeah, because a range should be there. For, you will know someone's got that range. Pretty much most people, you'll find out from the very few minutes of talking to them, the level of intellect, how they conduct themselves. You can kind of find that in the first few minutes of interacting with somebody. If they haven't got that range at the beginning, more than likely, probably haven't got that range. Right? But I don't know what you thought, so, uh, Maria, on the Garrett and, and Sarah situation. Yeah, I mean, I think, and I just got to say this, like, I think Sarah is extremely inexperienced mm. to dealing with men. That's key word. You know, um, because the mindset that she has is the mindset that you have in high school, where like you want the bad boy, and, you know, things like that. Listen, we've all been there, ladies. We've all been there where we wanted the bad boy. I remember mm. my phase of wanting the bad boy, Come on now. and that was in high school. We went a bit of college, right? And then you realize that that leads to destruction. Okay? <laughs> and so what I did <laughs> was I had to do a lot of self-reflecting. I had to do a lot of self-work um, to grow from those um, experiences and to learn from those experiences. And now what I, I had to, you know, retrain myself to be attracted to what is good for me. Mm. And that is something that we have to start doing more intentionally. Because if you have certain goals and aspirations in life to have a family or, you know, create longevity in a relationship or, you know, create sustainability, you have to understand what are the key ingredients that are needed in order to, um, you know, ensure the longevity and sustainability and you have to understand you know what are the red flags that could hinder that goal for you and so when i realized you know what was good for me and stuff like that that's what became attractive to me attractive to me so now instead of the bad boys i go for guys who are leaders and strong um minded have integrity honesty, honor, you know, all this type of stuff. They may not be the most exciting, most flashy guy anymore, but because of my life experiences, I know that the flashy, exciting doesn't always lead to happiness, mm. okay? It'll lead to excitement and a lot of drama. <laughs> it's not gonna lead to happiness, okay? So, understand your priorities and this is what makes me believe that sarah doesn't have that much experience with guys right because a lot of women typically figure this out around the high school college stage you know they they go through the bad boys and you know all that good stuff and then they come out on the other end like we're not doing that anymore <laughs> right we're going for good guys who have a good 401k and retirement <laughs> <plans and laughs> sensible guys right you know we're going for the stability but she's mm -hmm. over here still going for that and i think the people on the show are relatively young young that's so the point yeah i think that you know there's leeway to be had there's you know understanding to be had for where these people are at in life these people are like 30 40 age range i would be like girl <laughs> problems they get that out okay mm -hmm. <laughs> like therapy you know but the fact that she's still young i think that she will figure it out eventually and maybe who knows maybe this experience will help her get to that level of realization and self-awareness um so yeah I, you know we'll we'll see how that turns out mm -hmm. Yep, let's watch this little, a little bit of a clip. There's something that Sarah does, which is really interesting. In this uh, but physically, it's definitely there. I mean, we, we've had a strong connection from the start, I feel like. So there's like there's nothing for you to worry about, like for real. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
I think there is more to him than I initially thought. I am here for a romantic connection, so I'm interested to continue to get to know him better. Now, obviously, Jarrett's going to say something afterward, deal with what he's about to say, because he's the most dangerous type of F-boy. Um, but go for it. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so there was a scene, I think it was more so at the beginning of the episode, where she was talking to Nakia, and she was telling Nakia that, like, Colin, I've categorized all these guys, right? Mm. Like, who's a good guy and who's an F-boy. And she had Garrett as, like, a nice guy. So what this means, I don't know if you can find the clip. If you can find the clip, that would be great because I think it's a very interesting scene because Nakia was not convinced at all. When she mentioned Garrett as a nice guy, Nakia was like, what? No. Mm -hmm. Um, But she thinks that he is. And so this is what leads me to believe. Again, it reinforces she has no life experience. Mm -hmm. Um, Number two, like, you know her perception of reality is extremely warped Mm. by you know i i don't know because i don't know enough about her to say you know what is leading her you know to think the way that she does but i just think that you know someone like her is just so vulnerable you know in a situation like this and she's the perfect prey for f boys so Life experience is needed if you're gonna play this type of game, and I'm just saying. And then I'm like looking at myself and I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> and then I'm like, wait, is it? And then I wake up in the morning and I'm like, yeah, I do. I'm finding out that I'm definitely like physically attracted to. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think she is a little bit naiv- naivete. And what was interesting in that clip is that she gave him assurance. So actually, what she did is actually killed herself because she's given him assurance. I think what, what these ladies are missing is the ability to be coy. And I think that does come with experience, that does come with, that comes with knowledge, right? Which oftentimes is what our older, you know, friends, family are meant to teach us um, and release game to us early so we can play the game, right? Mm -hmm. But if you don't get that information, when you go into certain scenarios, you get played, right? You get played and and you don't know how, you think the world is, is safe, right? Um, and so that that right there, she's like, oh, you don't have to worry about anything. You know, you know, we've had a connection from the beginning. Duh, duh, duh. Why are you giving him assurance? Now you're giving him assurance, right? You're making him feel comfortable and he's going to be no longer on edge. The whole point is to keep him on edge. OK, so that he keeps running after you, baby. And if he doesn't want to be on you, that's fine. He doesn't want to be on you, right? Because it's a show. This is not real life, right? In real life, maybe you might want to cave in a little bit. But it's real life. It's a, it's a game show at the end of the day. And some of these guys are professed F boys. So, you know, you're, you want to have your, your guard, not even say guard, like you want to have your tail up ready, you know, at all times, just being patient, vigilant, understanding, and knowing what to say at certain times. And I think just that assurance told me that you're, you maybe you've got a bit of people pleasing energy in you and you, you don't want to, you don't like hurting people's feelings. That softness right there. So, uh, there's like, there's nothing for you to worry about, like, for real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's what's going to get you killed okay all right the game and the streets out here ain't for those people that are going to feel remorse sis you let him know garrett appreciate you. he's been nice today maybe even give him a kiss maybe you can even do but you don't assure him don't worry your place is safe here why are you assuring him you know so i, I think there's a little bit of naivete with her um garrett actually says say after um which i think is the most dangerous part of his game Honestly, I think it's the most dangerous part of this game. I came here for the game, not for a relationship, but it's hard to even admit it. But yeah, I like her. Oh, uh, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. <laughs> I felt like that was a long time coming. You're a good kisser. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> so are you. <laughs> I'm glad we waited. <laughs> yeah, I am too. Now, this guy is the worst type of uh, F-boy. Let me tell you why he's the worst type of F-boy. He's the worst type of F-boy that does get a little bit caught up and gives you a glimmer of hope that he actually is going to change for you. Guess what? He's going to reverse back to default setting the moment it gets fully serious. He going to revert back to F-boy status. This is why I say it's so dangerous because he's not even willing to stay on the outer court. He's willing to come inside, okay, into the inner of inner, holy of holies, okay? And he wants to play with emotions. 
You know what I'm saying? That is the most dangerous type of guy because he will mess you up to a point you will end up defending him saying, but it was so real. You know, I know he was trying. I know he was trying to make it work between us two. Yeah, 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 yeah. He came in there to, to kill you. Okay, just remember that. He came in there to kill you. This is not a movie where the, the person coming to kill you suddenly has a change of heart and realizes, no, nah, I don't want to kill you no more. He came to kill, still and destroy. Daddy. I think, though, what I noticed the most, though, is her level of not grilling him, like mm. not really giving him the space to work for it. Like, she, I feel like she's falling for really basic, easy pickup lines or, like, you know, things that are so like 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 she's falling for such easy game like he doesn't even have to work hard to like figure out yeah i like her oh serious, serious, serious. <laughs> i felt like that was a long time coming you're a good kisser thank you what should i say to her like he's saying basic things and she's just you know melting into it and so I'm just like, you know, when it comes to, you know, women dealing with that, because see, women have to be taught male games, you know, because we are so emotionally driven. So it's, it's going to be easy to manipulate our emotions, right? And so when you have strong men in your life to kind of put you up on game and say like, hey, like, this is what a guy will say or what a guy will do, but you need to look at X, Y, Z to see if he's, like, really serious, right? If you don't have that level of context going into situations like this, as a young girl who's inexperienced, you know, things like that, you will fall for anything, you know? So, ladies, like, I, I just think that it is good to have solid, male figures in your life if it's not your dad you have a brother or someone who genuinely platonically and objectively is looking out for your best interest to really put you up on game seek out that information Mm -hmm. because you you need to be able to recognize the sign Mm -hmm. and also be able to recognize you know how to test what a guy is saying is true because guys can say anything and they do say anything that's what they do that's what Generally. we do whether you're a nice guy or a good guy or you know an f boy that guys will say what they can to get into the good okay <laughs> but the guy that is willing to prove to you that he you know is actually you know authentic and stuff You'll have to be able to figure that out in a way that you just can't fall for anything. Mm. You know, and you have to carry yourself in such a way where you're no nonsense to a certain extent. Yeah, you still wanna like be flirtatious, you know, whatever, and you know, have a good time. But at the same time, you still have to have a certain presence about you that lets the guy know that games will not be had over here, you know. And so I just feel like any little thing he says, it's like she's just falling into it, kissing him and giving him all these reassurances, like you said. And it's just, girl, for what? Like, what has he actually done to, like, deserve Deserve this? Yeah. Any of your time, any of your affection, any of your attention. Thanks. Uh, (laughs) So are you. I'm glad we waited. (laughs) And part part of knowing that is knowing who you are and knowing what you like and what you know you deserve and making sure that you receive that before any other proceedings are are had. Period. And with that, I rock with that 100%. 100% rock with that. I think, yeah, I think Sarah will have to learn the hard way in terms, in terms of actually getting to have that experience that is needed to really decipher who is good and who's bad i think she just has a do you know what i I really do like sarah though you know she's got a heart of gold you know she wants to believe 
these men, you know, that are angels, all of them. But unfortunately, darling, naivete it will get you killed in this world. You know what I'm saying? You don't believe me, but a heart of gold. I mean, does she really have a heart of gold? I mean, she's a nice girl. I think it's easy to confuse naivete with the with having a heart of gold. Fair but, enough. That's true. You know, at the end of the day, where your heart lies is what you end up gravitating towards. So fair enough. You know, this is where I'm like, this is where I'm preaching. Sarah, know yourself. Women out there, know yourself. Okay. The problem is a lot of people, especially in our generation, do not self reflect. That's the they truth, yeah. lack self awareness. They lack, you know, the ability to critically think about, you know, how they are interacting with the world around them and how the world mm. around them is interacting with them. And so, because of that, you have a, a bunch of people lost, not having any true sense of direction going into the dating scenario, just willing to accept anything. And do anything to figure things out, you know. So, in terms of part of goals for me, you have to do good deeds and have like a sense of integrity and honesty and stuff like that for me to categorize you as like a heart of gold. Okay, you're thinking about others, but uh, you know, for her, I mean, it could just be like her just not even knowing who she is and trying to figure out who it is and she could be horny uh, and you know trying to just get her rocks off in this whole process and trying to find somebody who's going to do it the best like that could just be what it is coupled with naivete mm. the way you're going about it is just dumb that doesn't mean you have a hard goal in my opinion but that's just me I love